Hey, don't do that. This chair. I'm gonna go ahead and say my goodbyes now. No, 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 no. Do that to my shoulder. Don't do that to the chair. My shoulder. Ow! Oh, this poor chair. Everybody, meet Pepsi. Pepsi, meet everybody. Okay, the introduction's over. Time to start filming because she's not gonna be uh, too excited in about a minute. Before you scream clickbait, allow me to explain up front. AMD's value proposition has been a hot topic for us tech tubers for quite a while now. The question regarding the choice between the i7-8700K, typically hailed as the gaming king, and the R7-1700 or 2nd Gen 2700X, true multi-core ball buster CPUs, seems to always spark debate. And rightfully so, I mean, both have their advantages and I have to give conditions when asked to recommend one or the other. For workstations, virtual machines, and streaming, you can't go wrong with a 1700. The 2nd Gen Ryzen stuff is just great. Gravy. But for pure gaming and niche video work, in Premiere for example, the 8700K reigns supreme. Intel's low latent ring bus trumps the competition, that's the Infinity Fabric on AMD's side, and an IGP means additional software encoding support. But the introduction of Ryzen in 2017 placed Intel's Core i5 into questionable territory. Look, KB Lake and older units structured around merely four cores are just a bit dated in 2018. They were still better gamers overall. They still are, if that's all you wanna do is just game, but fewer and fewer people are literally doing just that with the rise of Twitch and other streaming services growing in popularity. So people are doing more than one thing at the same time, and that makes sense. The core race is strong, the marketing punch is stronger, and that's exactly why Intel bumped its Core i5 count for Coffee Lake's launch. Now, the 8400 and 8600K consumer-grade i5 CPUs boast six cores, still no hyper-threading. Gaming performance is still some of the best in the business, but we consistently see comparable Ryzen CPUs, both in terms of price and core count, crushing the blue team in heavy multitasking workloads. And that's where the title of this video comes into place. One of our sponsors and Patreon supporters at T-Bomb pointed out that the first gen Ryzen 7 CPUs, most notably the 1700, was priced at 199 USD. That is nearly half the MSRP of the chip at launch, and it's something I think you should strongly consider for your next PC build. Now, as of the publishing date of this video, actually when I'm filming this, uh, the deal no longer exists. It was still running yesterday, but I've linked the CPU and a few motherboards and RAM kits down below in the video description, and I invite you to check those prices on a daily basis, uh, if not weekly, because I'm pretty sure we'll see similar pricing in the near future. It just makes sense. They've done it once before, they'll do it as the chip continues to get older. I'm only asking you to consider it and to look at this deal for what it truly is, an eight core 16 thread CPU capable of at least 3.8 gigahertz under modest conditions. That's with a B350 motherboard, which is very cheap by the way. It's priced at entry level Core i5 territory. Now in games, it isn't the best. I've run several tests in the past with various graphics cards to verify this, but I'd like you to overlook the small FPS deltas. This is not about the better performer, it's about the better value. If we break these benchmark systems down on an FPS per dollar, basis for a game like GTA 5, the money saved on a cheaper, higher core count CPU and B350 motherboard result in comparable overall value per frame extracted. This, mind you, ignores the streaming and multitasking benefits of such a machine over its i5 counterpart, despite Intel's core jump from 4 to 6 this time around. So the point of this video isn't to make a sale or to earn a few bucks on affiliate commissions. I mean, the CPU is not even priced at $199 anymore. The goal was to bring to your attention rather the aggressive pricing strategies of AMD. They've turned quite sassy recently, mocking Intel's 8086K giveaway and undercutting much of the competition's pricing structure. I mean, the R7-1700 isn't even AMD's latest generation CPU. The second gen 2700 is still selling in the States for almost 300 bucks. Still a heck of a bargain when seen in the context of Z370 and unlocked i7 prices, mind you, but that's for a separate video. Look, if you want the best in gaming, go for the i7. If you want Intel's architecture for optimized programs, go for the i7. I'm not going to try to steer you away from Intel if you were already going after it for those specific reasons, but if you want pure value, it's almost impossible to overlook and not consider a brand new Ryzen 7 8-core 16-thread CPU priced under $200. Be vigilant, check Amazon every day for these deals, and jump on the one you feel best suits your next build, whether it be with the red team or the blue team. I don't care. I don't get paid by either of them either way. How do I look at this pricing strategy, though? I think AMD wants the i5 dead. I think they'd openly admit that. If they're willing to price a 1700 at 199 then they'll surely do it again, and bundling with an affordable B3 50 board will yield some of the best value in the business. This isn't about picking a side, it's about being rational, being reasonable, using your brain. And when it comes to value, eight cores, 16 threads at 199 is just 
in my eyes, it's almost impossible to pass up. If I was building another workstation PC, something I needed a lot of cores for, and I was conscious about my budget, you know, maybe I want to spend a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred dollars, then the Ryzen 7 1700 at 199 is, it's just staring you right in the face and begging to be bought. And I think that I would have no problem buying that CPU over the i7-8700K merely from a value proposition. I wanna know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know, give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click that red subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.